Uh, Richard Lewis, a uh, guy that uh, is involved with uh, E League, just basically um, came out and th- there was this tweet, con- this Twitter conversation, and the the, the gist of it was that um, more or less the FGC uh, as a collective outside of pros are a bunch of smelly weebs that get together, and their tournaments are holding back the uh, elite televised invitationals <laughs> that we can have. How could they? <laughs> possibly hold them back and basically it's the the idea that the pros with their sponsorships could be more esports and they could earn and they could they if could, not for their association with these unwashed droves or? and and that you know the the idea that like uh, i'm not gonna dispute the unwashed weed part <laughs> yeah no he's completely right fighting but, game attorneys are fucking ghetto dirty shit and the and the core of of what what set a lot of people off besides you know, I mean, the, you yeah. smell. That's <laughs> you a know. really core yeah, insult. A, uh, not uh, 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 smelly weeps, notwithstanding. Um, <laughs> Cuts to my soul. The, the the main thing was like also like it, if sponsors could get their players more um, guaranteed screen time without the risk of their sponsored players. Uh, what was it? Getting getting outed by a fluke in pools. <sighs> Then these, then that we could take these esports. We could I, we, we could make it esports kind of thing. I, we could take I it to the next level. I can see exactly why that would co- like yes. So the complete misunderstanding of the fucking fighting game community in looking at a sponsored player getting eliminated in pools as a fluke, that mentality shows you it, it just create. Everyone was starting to get along. Everyone was starting to get along, if right? One step forward. And sports were starting to come hand. We hand. were kind of watching things happen in a way where it's like, yeah, Two it's on TV. Back. You know, at the end of People the day, were falling off to the side, but a, it happened. A top player in, in in Overwatch and a top player in Street Fighter Five are both wearing a sponsored ass shirt that That's looks, cool. you know what I mean? Echo Fox and, and 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 all these other teams coming together, and you know, names, whatever. But yeah. things like this just draw that line and show you, like, no, no. The problem is that when you the person that's in charge, well, it's when someone of influence that's in charge of something like E League yeah. has the viewpoint that you know uh, it like they don't understand the part where before and after these major televised tournaments, mm-hmm. those same pro players are in that unwashed weed pile. Yes. That's where they want to right? be. They go they back, wash up to put the sponsorship on. They come yeah. from that pile where every where like you crawl out, you cut your by, teeth by beating everyone, yeah. and then they go back to that because that's the core of what the community well, here, is. Here's the thing, and they seem to think that there's this line of like skill born in a white room, closed off from everybody, mm-hmm. and then as soon as they exit that room, they put on the jersey and become a pro, and they just walk on air above the community see what's interesting about this is this like i remember a long time ago back before fgc got esports at all uh there's a lot of talk about like mlg and you know halo and counter-strike and it always seemed like except even in korea it's like it was hey do i get into esports how fucked am i gonna get by a man in a suit yeah. that's gonna take me or my team for a ride and and own our shit right and that was that was like 10 15 years ago. And the new FGC esports, there's a lot of like worry about those guys. Yeah. The they never of, left. The MIBs. The, right? the, yeah, the yeah. MIBs, right? And they have been quiet for a while, yeah. it seems. This guy's that's exactly what everyone is always afraid of. It's fucking businessman there's, coming in to do his business in our sports thing there's uh yeah they're like again there's a thing where you kind of you start to squeam a little bit when you hear things like they're missing out on an opportunity to earn right but it's like yeah, a little bit like that you're like it's just it's not that you what you're saying it's not there's no problem with what you're saying but it's just that type of language that makes us go like ugh because this combined with the whole Unwashed weebs and, and mm-hmm. fluke type of you know mentality shows that you actually fundamentally don't understand the product you're trying to well, financially I, get involved. I have with. I have what I think in my mind what the fundamental misunderstanding is, and that is the the biggest difference between esports and sports is not that uh, it's electronic or non physical or whatever. The biggest part, particularly for fighting games, is the most applicable. Is that fighting games are open tournaments down to the day of. Yes. There is no goddamn real sport 
that lets a dude walk in off the fucking gonna, street yeah. and say, if I'm going to fight GSP bas- in pools. If a yeah. basketball game is going on, someone from the crowd just can't get onto the court. Of course. Would it make it a more exciting game? Yes, absolutely. But that's but it, right? Those are the rules. Exactly. And, and Those are sponsored players that are on the court. And because that's the way that like the NBA and the NFL and all these major leagues have run for a while, and that's the like huge televised opportunity situations uh, that, that you get from... Uh, having a league, uh, they look at it as like again an upper untouchable echelon, echelon, yeah. you know, of player that comes from a completely different place. Like there's a combine that you go through, and then you know what I mean. Well, and I and think it's this end- whole thing, and and and, and uh, uh, a lot of first person shooters and a lot of uh, um, mobas have run that way for a while now. And um, fighting games always prides itself, and at least the FGC has prided itself on the idea that like you come through and you go through the bracket and you face anybody who wants a shot at it along the way. I can understand this guy's way of thinking because he looks at the way sports are run and he looks how fighting game things are won. Yeah. And ideally, yeah. if you're trying to run a business, okay, your teams are individuals, maybe three guy teams, maybe yeah. five, whatever. But uh, the the fact that Evo is still a completely open, open fan run tournament, yeah. Yeah. It, and it's the number one, yeah. even bigger than Capcom, that's absurd because that event should be a smaller and b it should be the min- it should be the actual minor leagues mm-hmm. that you farm players from. Mm-hmm. To go to the sponsored events where only sponsored players are invited, mm-hmm. and there's and, no big upsets, and everybody gets a certain amount of matches, and it's it, maybe it's even run round robin, so yeah. that everybody because like look at look at uh, football, right? Look at baseball, look at hockey. They sell. You you say I want to see the Canadians, right? How many games of Canadians do I want to see? I want to see a hundred games. Let's say no, fifty games. How many games are there a year? Fifty, whatever. Sure. I buy my fucking tickets for my fifty games. Guess what? I get to see my fifty games. Say yeah. I want to see Daigo play, and Daigo has a bad year, and Daigo gets knocked out of every tournament in pools, and I never actually see Daigo on TV once. I, yeah. I really like the idea of I bought tickets to Daigo. Yeah. But that's um, these are my Daigo right? tickets. But, and, and the thing is, is that there is, is a place, and and so there's there's a certain so certain people want that business model, Matt. And there is a place for invitationals. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a place for these like special events, like Kimono Michi, and you know the even E League and these play, things where it's like okay, people that have proven themselves across I, the season I or whatnot. Think the Capcom what was that God's one in Japan? In Japan. God's Garden. God's Garden. Yeah. yeah. I think I think invitational plus seating with tournament wins is really. Good yeah. idea. There's a great there's a great place to have those, you know, but but uh when you're looking at the existence of the open bracket as the enemy, because that's the thing that people happen to care the most the about only, as opposed the to the only exclusives. The reason it matters is that open bracket. You know, and people care more about those the, the those large events than the invitationals, but this person but like this person seeing that as a threat and as the thing holding everyone back is like if, you're just you 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 simply don't understand if it. Esports boss man is like hates Evo cuz it's the biggest, but it's not like all sponsored players and it's like all these unwashed weebs. It's like make your own event, make fighting Mania. Well, here's the and thing. then have worked gimmicks and have ring girls like well, be, but you dude, can't because it's already in Las Vegas in a, the biggest well, like possible league. league. Oh, you hold can't on, though. because you you can't put the cart before the horse, right? Like that's the you idea. Can. It's but, just a bad idea. But, and if he made it right now, a bunch of people wouldn't go to it because it's I need not to, Evo. I need to interrupt you guys and let you let you know that E League does exist. Yeah, it did air things on ESPN. Where it did. injustice and yeah. you know, I mean, like this is a, this is an existing thing, and yeah. um, it's but it fine. Doesn't have a central thing to rally around. It, it, but it's it exists and it and it has its it has its its credibility. But it's like it's fine as a separate invitational event from the open brackets that are a part of the community. Uh, but no, it, it, there's a definitely other, there are other sports that like, well, there are other sports that sort of emulate this and like, yeah, one that um, gets compared a lot is poker, you know, because yes. there's games like that where like you you walk in and if you win at poker, Any gambling, really. you're open, yeah. gambling you're in an open bracket games. and you make your way through to the top, you know, and the people that tend to win are, they eventually become known players, yeah. but it's because they came from the bottom all the way through each time. And um, yeah, we basically just have that same fundamental like core principle and value that's appreciated. So if you're looking at it from the point of view of uh, earnings, 
all you want is those sponsored jerseys in front of a camera as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. And so every time two unsponsored players are, are on stream, it's seen as a loss it's, of earning it is opportunity. A, it is a pr- opportunity cost yeah. is the specific word. And and so like that, that there's a certain point in time where you're just like, oh, it's like the, you know, it's likening, it reminds me of the loot box situation where it's like, if the bottom line is profitability and nothing oh, else, yeah, yeah. then absolutely you, you loot box and, and get people with gambling ish, uh, addiction issues to spend as much money as possible to make mm-hmm. as much money as, as you no. can. But there's a level of like, I don't want to say integrity, but there's a core that goes beyond the profitability yeah. that the people participating in this thing tend to care about. And it's the reason why they're participating. It, and if that doesn't align with your monetary incentives, then you're just not compatible. It, it is really tough to explain to business money man that there are situations. It's it's uh, God. It's the same thing of uh, companies are supposed to not. They're not supposed to create profit. They're supposed to create value, right? And that distinction is nebulous and tough to explain, even to everybody, right? Because value is tough to measure, yes. right? And that's what your stock price is supposed to be, right? So say you have two unsponsored players, you're not creating any money. By watch by having them be watched, right? right? But if one of those players is, say, I don't know, Flo, and he's talking shit to the six-year-old child <laughs> that he's fighting and wrecking him and the child cries and runs away, <laughs> that didn't create money, but it did create money value mm-hmm. to the event and the sport in Hilarious. general. And, and eyeballs are going to tune in for that. Here's here's a really good example that's almost in reverse. People don't like it, but it's still a move that can work when celebrities go to WWE and have a big, dumb one, one pay-per-view match. That's a spot that mm-hmm. should be taken by a wrestler mm-hmm. who has earned it, not mm-hmm. Jay Leno mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm, Carl mm-hmm. Malone right, or De- right. like or you know Floyd Mayweather sure, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So people hate that, and and you'll you'll see uh, uh, Smarks just be like, "Well, I would have he didn't get on, on the card because it was taken up by a celebrity." But a celebrity is an event where they mainstream media points at it and looks. So I do kind of understand like uh, an esports guy just being like, well, yeah, if Mm -hmm. a sponsor player is not there, his spot is being taken by someone that – so I get it. But it's weird because when celebrities come in, it draws mainstream attention Mm -hmm. to the event that you wouldn't get otherwise. So it's similar and dissimilar at the same time. I mean, uh, for what it's worth, like Richard Lewis did leave – after feeling pushed out, you know, by so like there's a point where it's like your values and the FGC values don't line up, and so he he left, you know, like he separated himself from that, and like there's just an understanding that like okay, on both ends, you're not wanted, and his ideas are not not compatible. So he so what you're seeing is he hasn't changed his ideals; they're the same. But, but everyone's like, uh, it's it's you have the fancy way or the cynical way. You get to go. Did he get pushed out because this doesn't align with everyone else? Or did he get pushed out because he was fucking dumb enough to say them out loud? There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever you want to take that as. One thing remains true, and one thing that is that is that is fucking standing today is that Mike Ross is the J. Cole of the FGC. This motherfucker has been like everyone is just going like, look at the profit. Look at the profit, Mike, from a couple from not too long ago, mm-hmm. basically going. Nah, nah, though. Esports, though. You don't understand. And every time something like this happens, everyone's going to go, fuck. Let's I, go read the scripture. I feel Mike like... Mike Ross, <laughs> uh, verse, uh, fucking, you know, book like, three, verse two. I feel like people who didn't expect the esports stuff to be grosser than it was on its surface to be mm-hmm. were, like, naive. Mm-hmm. Businessmen going to business. Yeah. The Book of Ross will now be Book of Ross. That's will that's, now be that's it. The, the 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 third the, the New Testament for it's us. It's just got an embossed picture of E Honda every on once, the front of it. <laughs> every once in a while, when something goes down, you got to turn back to that AMA and scroll through. And you, I'm, I guarantee you, if you think about them enough, mm. you'll come. You'll find that answer. Mike mm. Ross, should I sit in the corner and and hand slap esports? Yes. <laughs> Should I always be holding back? Yes, yes. hold back from esports. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes you'll need to press forward and punch, though. Do your sacraments, say your scrub lord's prayer, and uh, 
And check out that Corey gaming video about salt. Dear God, please don't let me go zero and two. Oh, zero and two is bad. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the. What if you win rounds? Prayer. Does that make you feel better? It, it, it made me feel better against Daigo, but yeah. it was <laughs> it was what it was. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah. You put value in whatever you got, and if you lose, if you don't win rounds, then you put value in hits, though. Yeah, because you yeah, got yeah, some yeah, good yeah, ones in, hits. right? Hits are currency, basically. You won. Yo. I got the timer to run. We beat T Swag got, I got, watching Killer Instinct. There you go. I got double perfected, but yo, I ran that timer down, and yeah. uh, you didn't perfect me. So, quite frankly, the moral victory goes. He, we won. Yeah, that's it. Just love expectations are such that like you can manipulate them <laughs> with clever words. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, as far as weeks go, I can't wait for it to get super gross, man. Super gross. Yeah. Esports though. Esports. Oh well, I know because at the end of the day, it's just like it just it's just a dumb Twitter shouting match. Yeah, maybe. Um, and uh, you know, <laughs> who knows? Maybe, maybe Richard Lewis will wake up one day in the middle of the night, and the ghost of Marvel will be standing above him. <laughs> you <laughs> killed. Richard! <laughs> they, okay, is it the ghost of the logo, or is no, okay. it like all fit like stop, all like stop, twenty-five? Stop. You characters guys are both there. you're both unfamiliar. The ghost of Marvel what is, it? is the man who approached Chris G on stage. Oh, that oh. man face to face with the controller and said, "Play me." Remember that guy? I yeah, do. Yeah, that yeah. crazy looking motherfucker that everyone thought Montreal Street Fighter had, had sent as an assassin came off the street. Man. Yeah, no. That is the ghost of Marvel. Okay, okay. And maybe, and I'm saying maybe he will be standing above the bed, holding a pad out, going, yo, we got to play. He also, he also has rattling <laughs> For your chains, soul. Though. I like that. Oh, shit. What was your week? What, did yeah, you, well, did what did you, you do? Did you play Street Fighter Five? No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a week. Sick. Um, I guess I'll start with, like, the... <laughs> So Friday, how was how was Friday for you guys? What's Friday? Did Friday you, got a lot of work done. Did you done. did you did you notice the fucking gust gale wind attack? Nah, man. I was inside the city? when it happened. I was okay. uh, I was feeling ill that day and stayed So there. so there was nothing short of a storm eagle gust. Yes. That hit the city and bam, and, bam, and bam. basically combined from the the, the all corners. Mm. To to give us, I want I I what I don't forget what number I mile per it was hour winds ninety wins. kilometers an hour. It yeah I think and I think it got up to a hundred right. I want you to at finish a point. off by saying my building was destroyed. So that's grandma destruction speeds. It was crazy. It was fucked. And uh, at some at some point because you have to imagine there's no, when you're on street level at least there's buildings to kind of break it up a little bit. Yeah. On a rooftop you got nothing. Well also not just that but I mean like there are certain wind tunnels like Atwater Street like you know how windy it's oh, yeah. normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That shit must have picked up to like 140 yes, in because, there. Yes because because there's there's speed boost pads where every time there's an overpass the the wind like it, it all funnels in together combines itself and boosts yeah, out. There's a couple of streets <laughs> in Montreal that were built wrong. It creates it <laughs> creates like it's beyond the wind tunnel. It is like the attack center. You no, know, the like, wind is powerful enough. Let's help it along. So I want you to think of any time you see a a um a like Death Star in a Gundam type show, Got right? It. A, right, a, a la uh, death laser, and it has those like extra points of like concentration, those rings that yep. it goes through to like yeah, really, yeah. it's that. So, so you're on a roof. All that to say that my fucking fence on my roof just blew the fuck off. Jeez. Completely separated. And uh, So here's the question. Yeah. This is a very important question. When you say it blew off, yeah. you're not saying it blew away. Right? It just blew off. It didn't fall off the roof. See, okay. if it blew far away from you, then I guess that stops being your problem. But <laughs> oh. but that's um, someone else's problem. Right? So But I, if it yeah. blew off I, I'm putting I'm putting like you know little chairs and and, and furniture out there on on my roof so I'm hopefully nothing too valuable. Well, <laughs> not yeah. So like we're being careful about like what it is and what's going up there because it's like yeah in a ridiculous scenario where the wind carried this off the roof into the street we might have a serious problem. Well, It'd be two, great. Two years. Oh, sorry. After you, uh, real quickly. Um, it's like you put your Devil May Cry statue up there. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. Then someone looks up one day and they see like <laughs> Dante, <laughs> Dante's coming sword down. Coming down. <laughs> 
Yeah. We had, uh, like, two years ago, though, in the middle of winter, there was, like, a windstorm that was bad enough that was shattering people's screen doors mm. just for the pressure. Like, mm. yeah, it gets fucking windy every now and then. Yeah, and the thing is, I, I just bought one of those, like, umbrella sun uh, power pluie things. Parasol. Yeah, and so um, I was... And I, I, I had to set it up, but I bought, like, 220 pounds of sand to hold it down Sandbags, with. Sandbags, so yeah. Yeah, because that's what's recommended. Sure. And, and so I imagined that would be fine. But anyway, that fence was just wooden and came right off the fucking planking and just landed one half on my side, one half on my neighbor's side. And like, Did it hit the street? It did not. It, okay. it landed in between our property. Okay, because that... It, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he, heavy wooden street fence. Street bad. No, no, street very bad. Unless it unless it it blows so hard that it's two streets over, which not your problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least in this point, at this point, um, there's a very nice extended view of the roof, I suppose. There you go. But a lack of privacy. Come on, the bright side. Is it safe to be up there now with no fence? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's got the kind of built-in yeah. railings. Yeah. It, it, it's okay. The the outside stuff is fine. It's the it's more like the inside uh, of our property back to back is where that kind of damage was done. So mm-hmm. it's okay. It's no problem. It's still nice weather. Um. So yeah, that shit happened. Uh, I've been watching Westworld.